Hey, good morning. Today is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. This is a regular meeting of the King County Board of Supervisors. Madam Clerk, please call roll. Joe Neves. Here. Richard Valley. Here. Doug Baboon. Here. Rusty Robinson. Here. Richard Fagundes. Here. Okay, all five members are here today. We're ready to conduct, conduct business. At this time, would you all please rise for invocation from Pastor Arthur Fox, New Hope Presbyterian Church. Orthodox Presbyterian Church. Thank Thanks, you. Doctor. Gonna read Psalm 119, 1 through 8. Blessed are those who way, whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes, then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Let us pray. Almighty God, we look about us at the current cultural standing, the nature of the life that's lived and promoted in our day, and we are appalled. We are saddened to see how much things have degraded from your perspective. May we, O oh Lord, be upheld. May this nation be awakened to the knowledge of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. May our leaders, O oh God, be helped. Those who are struggling with leadership, may they be given the help they need. We beg you not to give us the leaders we deserve, but the leaders that will help us to find you. Give wisdom to the men and women who serve here in this building and who serve this county so well. And grant that Hanford to its still be can preserve to be a light in the darkness, a shining beacon of hope to those who want hope. Grant help and guidance to this meeting, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, please follow me as we salute our nation's flag. Ready? Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible. Yeah, at this time, we'll go to unscheduled appearances. Any person may direct the board at this time on any item on the agenda or any other items of interest to the public uh, that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Two minutes are allowed. Um, and I can be Good. Good morning, supervisors, members of the board of attendees. My name is Rebecca Donna Bell. I'm the community organizer at Resources for Independent Central Valley, RICV. We are a nonprofit organization. We help people with disabilities to be as independent as much as they want to be. As I was looking over the agenda, it does not mention about any kind of accommodations. According to the ADA, and I quote, the ADA requires that Title II and Titles, State and Local Government, and Title III and Titles, business and nonprofit organizations that serve the public, communicate effectively with people who have communication disabilities. The goal is to ensure that communication with these disabilities is equally effective as communication with people without disabilities. Whether it is by birth, accident, or by age, everyone have and will have some kind of disability. According to cinematic.ai, and I quote, language interpretation is a crucial element in organizing conferences that involve participants from diverse linguistic backgrounds. It ensures that all attendees can understand and participate in a conference proceeding effectively, regardless of their language proficiency. According to U.S. Census Bureau, approximately 40.2% of residents in Kings County speak languages other than English. Isn't it time for everyone who attends this meeting understands what is being said no matter what language they speak? 
Accessibility is everyone's responsibility. Now, I will tell you what I had to do in order to make it here. I live in Tulare. I had to wake up at 4, leave my house by 6.50 to get on the bus going to Visalia, get on the Hanford bus that comes to Visalia at 7.50. When I arrived in Hanford, I had the route 6 to get here. On January 30th, I was in the speed, and I had noticed a few things, even though her microphones had been from a few area, most of the times they weren't being used. How are people in the audience and online are supposed to hear you? On February 6th, I attended this meeting online, and I had a hard time hearing some people because they didn't use their microphone. Also, the picture was fuzzy. If the board would like, I gave a training on awareness and etiquette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll thank Abraham for your assistance. Oh, her, you, have, you, have, you have your card, okay? Yeah. Have your business card there. Abraham, would you take that, please, for our staff? Maybe Catherine can outline uh, the yeah. capabilities of the new plan. Catherine, you want a quick outline of where we're at with our ADA compliance remodel for our chambers? Uh, we're probably about a month out, but we are working on the WebEx translation. Uh, we're supposed to have a meeting on Thursday with staff to go over and uh, see where we're at on that process. I really don't have a date. Um, we can't even get into the chambers right now. We're trying to get a final, um, but we are working on the ADA, the room compliance, and um, yeah. well, well, right. but we are working on it. Yeah, we, we made a commitment about three or four years ago to upgrade our chambers to fit all 88 uh, mm -hmm. be compliant. Well, yeah, I thought you would join us in the end. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have been to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming today. Do we have anybody online, uh, Catherine? Actually, I have a speaker card for Sal Flores. Good morning. Good morning, Fire Chief. Good morning, Honorable Board and Honorable uh, Citizens of uh, uh, County of Kings. Just want to make an announcement that we are uh, planning to have a uh, welcoming uh, potluck for our uh, newly hired firefighters coming in on April the 15th. And uh, a formal invitation will be sent out to you all to see if you want to join us uh, for welcoming into the future of the fire department. Um, so again, that's coming in uh, pretty soon here. I just want to give you guys a put that in your radar. Hopefully you guys can uh, join us uh, on that day. And also just want to give you a heads up of uh, more uh, weather coming in. I know our office of emergency management is, is keeping an eye on it. And hopefully those uh, um, briefings that are coming out weekly are uh, being of, uh, informative to your area. So thank you. Thanks, sir. Our next speaker is Carolyn Least. Morning. Morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Chairman, members of the board, Carolyn Lee's Team of Resources Director. I'm here today to uh, announce a promotion within our office for a personnel analyst, um, Bria Anna Allen. She has been working for the county since 2016 and became um, a personnel, uh, sorry, personnel assistant uh, in 2020 and has promoted through the ranks in our office. And so we just wanted to announce that we have some more help in the analyst um, realm. And so we'll be introducing her to departments um, over the next three months in terms of who she gets assigned for. So thank well, you. Congratulations. That's all the speaker cards that I have. And it doesn't appear anyone online has their hand raised. Okay. There's nobody in the audience. We'll move on to the next item, which is approval of minutes. Uh, item A, report out of closed session from regular meeting, March 26, 2024. There's nothing to report. Item B, approval of the minutes from regular meeting, March 26, 2024. Move. Moved by Supervisor Fagundes. Second by Supervisor Robinson. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Joan Evans. Yes. Richard Valley. Aye. Doug Verboon. Yes. Rusty Robinson. Yes. Richard Fagundes. Yes. Five in favor. It's been approved as presented. We'll go on now to uh, consent calendar. All items listed on a consent calendar are uh, enacted by one motion, unless the board member would like to pull one and choose to uh, talk about it separately. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Move. Moved by Supervisor Fagundes, second by Supervisor Neves. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Joe Neves? Yes. Richard Valley? Aye. Doug Burboon? Yes. Rusty Robinson? Yes. Richard Fagundes? Yes. Okay, five in favor. We have approved the consent counter as presented. We'll move on now to regular agenda items, and we have elections. Lupe Villa. Or Lupe. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Lupe Villa, the elections office. Hope you guys have a good morning. Uh, I got two items for you today. I'm going to start off with the first item in regards to the March 5th, 2024 presidential primary election. Uh, I come before you to present to the board is to ask the board to set the statement of vote for the March 5th, 2024 presidential, presidential election. Pursuant to California Election Code 15372, as the registered voters, I'm required to prepare and submit a certified copy of the statement of vote to the governing body, which is the board. I would like to share some statistical information that reflects the turnout for the March 5th presidential primary election. During the March 5th, 2024 presidential primary, Kings County had over 63,000 registered voters, experienced a 29% voter turnout, um, over 64,000 ballots were mailed out, uh, of which 18,224 were returned to the office in process. The following is going to be a brief breakdown of the ballots that came in into the office and how they were delivered to our office. 9,394 ballots came in by ballot drop boxes. 6,182 came in by U.S. Postal Service. 228 were dropped off at the elections office. 1,091 were dropped off at vote centers. We had uh, seven vote centers operating during that election. 18 were faxed or mailed, and those are UOCAVA or REBBM, which is remote accessible vote by mail um, programs that we offer to the community. And 1,436 um, were people voted in person. Most of those folks came out on March 5th, which was election day on Tuesday. Um, so with those numbers given, the turnout is obviously very, very low turnout for 29%. It's very common for a pre uh, primary to have low turnout. Um, and we are not any exception to that. That's, that's across the state. I think statewide, the turnout for the uh, primary was just over 34%. So it's not something that is within the county, it's just border uh, participation is slow during the primaries. Um, I would like to give special thanks to my staff, Emily, Emmanuel, Paula, Hope, and Gloria for their dedication and work in the election. Um, it's also, it's, it was a, a challenge in that we had a uh, Congressional District 20 um, election as well, special election during the same time as we're managing or administering the presidential primary. Um, I also want to say thanks to the voters of Kings County for embracing the codes uh, that we have with the state of California and within the county. I appreciate them coming out. Uh, the results of the election shows that Supervisor Valle ran unopposed, and uh, congratulations to Mr. Valle for um, gaining or an additional four-year term. So uh, no one wanted his job, and here you go. So four more years for Mr. Valle. Um, we do I'll have a runoff. Yeah. <laughs> We do have a runoff for District 5, and that's going to be taking place November 5th. There's two candidates going to be going for that challenge, and then the winner takes off after that. So um, that's what I got for the uh, March 5th, 2024 presidential primary election. I ask that you please accept the March 5th, 2024 certified statement of vote as submitted, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Lupe. I know that I uh, appreciate your staff. I always vote day of election. That's just what I've always done. You know, I did it when I was 18. You had to go in, show your ID, sign up. They compared it. You got your ballot. You voted that day of. I still do that today, except this year it was, you know, we vote by mail. So I try to do it a couple days ahead of time. And so we had the two elections. So I went to the first one. Apparently, I must have lost my train of thought because I voted for the second election and not remembered it. So I came home the day of the fifth. And I said, you know, I, I got to go vote. Go in my office. I can't find the paperwork. What the heck? So I go down, call you, and he said, "Well, come down and vote." So I come down and vote. It's, well, you already voted. Yep. I'm like, "What the heck?" So I hope you got both my votes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you got them both. <laughs> but your staff yeah. was very good and very helpful. Thank it was you. a very easy process. So yeah. uh, thank you again. Yeah. Well, that's refreshing to hear, and I appreciate that. Yeah, we did receive uh, both ballots. One of them still sitting in the vault. The other one's been counted. So, okay. but we got them both. Yeah, I, I must be getting dementia. My daughter is like. Uh, yeah, what what's wrong with you? Yeah, join the club. It happens quite frequently. I, Morning. I go in my office and I go, why do you guys throw away my ballots? I get, don't throw away nothing else, but you throw away my ballots. What the hell is going on here? My next phone call was to Sarah Hacker, our DA. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding.
Oh, okay, never mind. Any other questions for the? Sorry. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Lupe, can you go over the cost of the voting centers and how what it costs to op operate, deploy them, and get uh, ready for an election that uh, spans several days? So, for the March 5th presidential primary, for that primary, we had seven vote centers. Um, we had one in Avenel, uh, Corcoran has one. We got two in Lemoore, then the rest are in the city of Hanford. Southside Hanford, North uh, COS, and the multi purpose room were actually the lobby of the old Kearney building. So, for each uh, operation day, I would say about a thousand bucks a day. Um, we have those are minimal days. There's five staff on at each vote center. We got to have a minimum at three so they can rotate for breaks and lunches and um, make sure we accommodate with the bilingual needs that we have for the community. Um, we deploy our, our equipment deployed about a, three days or so prior to the election, and that is handled by our public works department. Our maintenance department goes out and does the uh, drop boxes for us. We have 11 throughout the county, and those drop boxes are like 2,400 bucks each. Uh, we have 12. We got one on standby. One of them got damaged. Uh, I don't know. How, but it happened last year here at our complex. Someone backed into it and it damaged the box, so we had to replace it. Um, so that's expense that is, you know, it comes from my office, from my department. Um, the deployment of equipment is handled by our roads department. They bring a trailer, they load up our equipment, we go out to each facility, set up, test the systems, and then go home, come back the next day and fire up. The day after the election, which is on a Wednesday, we go back and pick up all our equipment to all seven boat centers and bring them back home and clean it up and get ready for the next one. So that's an additional expense. Our parks and grounds um, crew, they do the banners for us. So they deploy the banners for vote here banner or the official drop box banners as well. So that's an additional cost. I would say about $5,000 or so that is journal between my department and public works. So that's a cost associated to, to deployment of the election. Uh, the biggest cost is about $33,000, $35,000 for uh, poll workers. Um, and that's that that came with the primary election. So, and it's all budgeted um, It's part of my budget, new annual budget. Uh, for the special congressional district 20, we were a lot smaller. Uh, three centers, one in Lemoore, um, one in Lemoore and two in Hanford, uh, simply because of the community that is uh, within city 20 is those areas. So we cover those areas. We have five drop boxes and uh, we downsize the size of each center because the turnout. We were expecting this, a very low turnout and sure enough, it was low. So I'll go over the statistics next in my next presentation, but it was a low turnout. That cost was by far a lot less because there was less centers, less drop boxes, less staff. But uh, regardless, it's a cost that comes back to the voters of Kings County. There's no reimbursement for any of those two elections. Um, there's some reimbursement that comes to the number fifth uh, general election. That one will get some money back from schools, uh, special districts, uh, cities, and so on. So that's that's when we recoup the money. That's the money making election. Good. Thank and you. that one's going to be a full blown election. That's going to be back to seven centers, 10, uh, 10 days of early voting, and then election day. Thanks. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Any other questions? We have a motion to accept this. So move. moved, Mr. Chair. Moved by Supervisor Nev, second by Supervisor Fagundes. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call roll. Joe Neves. Yes. Richard Valley. Doug Burbin. Yes. Rusty Robinson. Yes. Richard Fagundes. Yes. Okay, Lupe, five members uh, have voted to approve your election. So thank you. And thanks for you for uh, uh, counting all my votes. You bet. I know the DA just walked in, so I haven't been served yet. So she hasn't called me. I left her a message. Okay. So I'm going to go. Um, my next item is going to be the same presentation. Um, it's an election that happened March 19th. That is going to be the Congressional District 20 special primary election. Uh, that election was held to fill the vacant seat that was uh, left by Mr. McCarthy back December 31st. Uh, the governor called an election May 21st. Um, I know May 21st is in the future, but we have to go back nine Tuesdays, and that Tuesday landed on March 19th. We did conduct the election in Kings County on that day. There was early voting of three days, and um, with election day, the 19th, making it for four days. So, uh, pursuant to California election code 15372, as the registered voters, I'm required to prepare, submit a certified copy of the statement of vote to, go, to the governing board, which is your board. Uh, during the March 19, 2024, Congressional District 20, we had a turnout of 27% of 
those 27 percent uh 7,000 that, that's equivalent to 7,956 folks coming out and casting their vote out of 31,000 ballots that were mailed out from those ballots 4,290 4, were dropped off at the drop boxes 2,986 came in by U.S. Postal Service, 33 were dropped off at the elections office, 533 were dropped off at our vote centers, seven were sent in by either fax uh, for the UOCAVA or IVBM, and 111 voted in person. Four days of voting, 111 folks came out and voted. You guys can do the, the math, but it's a very, very expensive vote that we had for that Congressional District 20. The results of the election is going to force us to have a general election on May 21st. That general election is going to be conducted by Fresno, Kings, Tulare, and Kern to fill the remaining seat or term for CD20. Um, and that's what we're at. We have two candidates that are going to be advancing uh, to that election on May 21st. The winner takes all, and they'll serve the remainder of that term till 2025. When we go back to November 5th, that same election is going to be on the ballot for the votes to vote. Um, is there any questions? I ask that you please accept the certified statement of vote for the March 19th Congressional District 20 special primary election. Thank you. I'm available, available for any questions. Any questions or comments? No questions, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm uh, present and my re election party tonight at Lake Bottom, seven o'clock, sponsored by Chef Robinson. It's all you can drink, all you can eat. We'll see you there. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Motion with a stipulation by Supervisor Valley. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Second by Supervisor Nez. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Joe Neves. Yes. Richard Valley. Doug Verboon. Yes. Rusty Robinson. Yes. Richard Fagundes. Yes. Hey, five in favor. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Then, yes, you know, every my, day. My, my comment is, you know, even though I made a mistake in my mind, your staff was prepared to, to handle it very professionally, and you knew when I voted, what day, and where, and where I dropped the ballot off. So we're, if there's any honest. complaint about not getting your vote counted they know where the vote comes in and yep. how it's counted and what day and everything so yep. uh, thank you again yeah we don't know what you voted for but we know you voted so. no, <laughs> yeah thank you so much. i hope you guys have a good day thank you okay we'll move on now to human service agency and we have wendy good morning wendy hi good morning wendy osakapo director of human services agency uh, today, I'm here to discuss revisions to the general assistance um, standards and procedure operate, operating procedures. California Welfare and Institution Code 17,000 imposes a duty on the county to adopt standards of aid and care for indigent and dependent poor. The general assistance program is a county program funded solely by uh, county revenue. It has been established to offer assistance to Kings County residents who are unable to provide for their own needs and unable to qualify for state or federal assistance programs. In October, we presented a, uh, we had a study session related to EBT um, skimming and scamming. And um, we provided an overview of both the theft of general assistance benefits and also an all county letter issued by the Department of Social Services that stipulates that county must re replace those EBT skimmed or scam benefits. Um, ca cash and CalFresh benefits are reimbursed by the state general fund, however, GA benefits are not and would be a, the county's responsibility. Um, our current operating procedures did not include a provision for that because um, EBT theft was, was not as prevalent as it has now become. From July 2023 to present, HSA, HSA has identified 11 inst instances of electronic theft of GA benefits, totaling $2,619. When I was here in October, we um, got some direction that we could replace while we were getting these procedures updated up to the amount of $8,000, so we're well under that, that ceiling that um, was established at that time. Um, we have reimbursed those benefits. and. Um, um, you know, there may be some additional benefits. Obviously, the, we've not concluded the year, but I don't anticipate we're going to hit that $8,000 threshold. Um, attached uh, to this agenda item is a is a revised um, uh, is a revised operating procedures, and I'm just going to summarize for you the changes that we made. Um, we provided two versions: a final version, and then one um, that has track changes in red, so you can easily um, see the see the updates. Section 91-101.19 um, just adds the replacement benefit definition. 
section 91-101.6 and 91-401 includes um, adds direct deposit and EBT to the way that um, um, people may, be, may receive it previously said just through a warrant or through a check. So we just took the opportunity to update our language. Section 91-204.16, we've added the a regulation that explains the reporting process when electronic theft is reported and the option to switch payment methods. So if someone did get it issued through EBT and they wanna to convert to uh, getting a check or direct deposit, it, it gives a provision for that. And the main component, which is on the last page, we added section 91-800. These revisions include the requirements related to electronic theft replacement, theft reimbursement payment methods, and the theft reimbursement limit, limit of 8,000 per fiscal year if the limit is reached, HSA will um, come back to the board for, for, you know, for additional guidance. Two versions, um, as I said, have been attached. The version with the highlighted track changes and the final versions, the standard procedures have been reviewed and approved by county council as to form. And so today we are asking you to adopt the revisions to the general assistant standards and procedures. And Thank I'm you. available for any questions. Any questions or comments? Moved by Supervisor Robinson. Second. Second by Supervisor Valley. Uh, I know we expect this to be a lot worse, so I'm glad it was under about $2,000. So yeah. uh, that's good to know. Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Joe Neves. Yes. Richard Valley. Aye. Doug Verboon. Yes. Rusty Robinson. Yes. Richard Fagundes. Yes. Okay, five in favor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, move on now to item C, which is uh, public health department. We've got Rosemary Rom. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman. Board of Supervisors, Rosemary Ron, Department of Public Health. I'm here today to bring a resolution to proclaim April 1st through 7th as National Public Health Week in Kings County. The American Public Health Association has celebrated National Public Health Week for the past 29 years. Annually, National Public Health Week events aim to increase awareness regarding the significance of safeguarding and enhancing the health of our communities. And it provides an opportunity to showcase and acknowledge the advancements in public health. This year's theme is protecting, connecting, and thriving. We are all public health. Um, this year, the Kings County Department of Public Health will be celebrating daily themes on public health through our th social media platform. And we'd like to encourage residents to recognize their potential in making communities healthier, safer, and more robust by fostering connections and building relationships that safeguard health and enhance life. Additionally, we'll be having an employee appreciation event on Wednesday, April 3rd. And during this week, the department also wants to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of three of our public health department employees who make a difference every day. Um, I'd like to introduce um, my assistant director, Everardo Legaspi, to announce this year's public health employees being recognized by the department. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Everardo Legaspi, I'm in the public health. <clears throat> Excuse me, this year, 25 individuals were nominated by their colleagues and the three empl employees being recognized today were selected due to their integrity, commitment, and positive influence on the department. Uh, starting with Eva Torres from our fiscal division. Eva is knowledgeable, committed, and resourceful. She is resilient and has the utmost integrity while performing her duties. Staff from throughout the department know that they can rely on Eva to provide timely and accurate information, and she does it all with a smile. Just her smile. Uh, Ce Cecilia Cici Chavez from the WIC division. CC has devoted over two decades to serving the residents of Kings County, particularly uh, WIC families. Her commitment has provided consistency in times of transition, and she's considered a dedicated leader by her colleagues. And uh, last but not least is Troy Hummerding, an Environmental Health Division Manager. Troy is a longtime employee that has taken on a major leadership role in the Environmental Health Division and has dealt with many challenges, including staff shortages and the implementation of a new software system, which is you know, seamless. Uh, in addition to dealing with these challenges, Troy doesn't hesitate to respond to weekend calls or issues or evening storms, floods, whatever it may be. And he always has a positive attitude and a great sense of humor, which is greatly appreciated by all health department staff. Anyway, we would respectfully request that you acknowledge um, April 1st through 7th as National Public Health Week in Kings County. And then afterwards, we'd like to have the employees come up and have a photo with you all. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions or comments? We'll 
Moved by Supervisor Pagunas, second by Supervisor Neves. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Joe Neves? Yes. Richard Valley? Aye. Doug Burboon? Yes. Rusty Robinson? Yes. Richard Fagundes? Yes. Okay. Five in favor. Thank you me. want us to come up here? Yeah, well. I'll... Oh, okay. All right, thank you. We really didn't do anything, so. You know, you voted. <laughs> Voted twice this time too. Yeah. <laughs> Got you in there? Come in. Got everybody. <laughs> Say immunizations with a do even. <laughs> oh, here's the official. Thank you. Thank Good you. job. Good job. Congratulations. Okay, we'll move on now to item D, which is Public Works Department, and we have Mitchell Cabrera. Good morning, Mitchell. It's been a long awaited item. Yes. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, Mitchell Cabrera, Chief Engineer with the Public Works uh, Department here at the county. Uh, before your board this morning with a request to approve a consultant services agreement with Dokin Engineering Incorporated for the preparation of the plan specification and estimate package for the Houston Avenue bridge replacement project. Um, as we all are well aware, as a result of the winter 2023 uh, storm event, the bridge over Cross Creek at Houston Avenue uh, was structurally compromised. After a couple of site visits with Caltrans and through a resolution, it was closed with no permitted loads, no traffic being allowed to go over the structure. Um, county staff has been working uh, through the Caltrans and uh, Federal Highway Administration process to submit a disaster aid relief request to get some funding to get this project going. Um, the process is taking longer than expected, so the county has decided to go ahead and upfront the cost for the preliminary engineering. So the road funds will cover the design following the federal guidelines as if it were a Caltrans project. And once the uh, FHWA determination is made, we'll be able to get that money reimbursed back for the design. This way we're able to start the design, move forward with the project instead of waiting uh, for um, FHWA or Caltrans to make that determination. Um, the project cost uh, for the engineering services is at one, $1.4 million, um, so that'll come out of the road funds. It will not um, affect any other funds. And then, as mentioned, if we're able to get that disaster aid relief through FHWA, that money will be reimbursed uh, through the county. Uh, the main uh, scope of the project is to prepare the design, but the, the first order, the first task is a, a kickoff meeting with the county. And in that meeting, we're uh, discussing um, three different alternatives uh, for the structure replacement. Uh, so we won't hopefully run into the same issue in the future. Um, Dokin Engineering is a well-established engineering firm. We're confident in the work they've done. Uh, we put out an RFP. They were the only firm to submit for this project at the time. Uh, we're confident in their ability to and their qualifications to do the work. They're working with the Department of Water Resources on a bridge replacement. They've done work in Tulare County for some of their bridge replacement projects. Um, so at this time, we're asking your board to approve the agreement. Uh, let us get started on the design for this project and hopefully get this built uh, sooner than we all expected. Thank you, Mitchell. Any questions or comments? Move. Moved by Supervisor Fudis. Uh, uh, <laughs> Supervisor Robinson. So not specific to the bridge, but on a related topic. I know uh, we've been talking about fixing a bunch of roads at some point, 20 roads, let's say, right? And we were going to prioritize which roads maybe we were going to fix. Now we're fixing almost all of them. How would this get going so quick? What changed? All the other roads or? Yeah, I know this is part of, of that whole conversation. This is just one individual. But on the other roads, we seem to have went from we're not going to fix any of the roads to now we're going to fix almost all the roads. And that happened in like one week's time. What changed? So, as mentioned in the previous study session, and I'm sure it'll be brought back, uh, I think next week, um, the decision was made to do uh, some work on the roads. It's not the full work we had originally anticipated. Um, these are minor repairs compared to full reconstruction. That's why you're able to do that now. It's like putting a band aid on a, on a bigger problem. Um, so, that's why you're able to open the roads, um, but it's not a full solution that we would have originally liked to, to have seen. But it does allow the roads to be opened at a much quicker rate. 
I'm grateful for it. I just wondered it. It seemed like we went from uh, nowhere to uh, everywhere in one week. Again, it was as the the study uh, session was put putting the uh, the opportunity or the potential to get that additional funding at risk. Um, this bridge, we're able to go at risk because Caltrans has allowed us. Uh, we've been in contact with them, and they said we can go ahead and upfront uh, the preliminary engineering cost to get the design going. Um, otherwise, um, unless the road funds uh, and Dwayne and his budget allowed us to do the work, we probably wouldn't be here right now asking for the. Well, thanks for expediting the other work. I think it was much necessary. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion. Second. A second by Supervisor Nance. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Joan Evans. Yes. Richard Valley. Aye. Doug Verboon. Yes. Rusty Robinson. Yes. Richard Fagundes. Yes. Okay, five in favor. Thank, Thank you, you, Mitchell. I have my uh, one of my employees lives by that bridge, and I hear about it constantly. So I'll be really happy to have that off topic. So <laughs> thank you. This bridge passed easier than the Kettleman Bridge for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go on now to the next one. Just joking. Administration, uh, John Devlin. All right, good morning, uh, Chairman Vermoon, and to your fellow board members. Uh, John Devlin, Chief Information Officer, County of Kings. Um, the item before you is to trans, uh, transition from the County of Kings current domain name from .com to .gov. In order to address security concerns around elections and provide assurance to citizens that they are interacting with a government agency representative, the federal government instructed all local government agencies to transition to a .gov domain name for email and website presence. Uh, there is no fiscal impact to the general fund. Um, some more background, the federal government instructed that all local municipalities transition to a .gov domain name and email address to ensure citizens that they're interacting with a government agency representative. Additionally, starting in 2025, federal grant applications will no longer be accepted by government agencies unless submitted by a .gov email address. This was set in motion by Senate Bill 2749, the .gov Act of 2019. Additionally, the state of California passed Assembly Bill 1637 in 2023 that mandated that all California cities and counties transition to the .gov domain name and email address by January 1st of 2029. To this end, the Information Technology Department notified admin of the ruling and worked on the transition plan. After the transition, the old email addresses and website domain will still work indefinitely. The old email address and web addresses will still work because it will redirect to the new domain via various server software. All outgoing emails will show the new email address of .gov, so we can apply for grants. Uh, the new email address will be user at countyofkingsca.gov, and the new website will be www.countyofkingsca.gov. Um, and no, that's not a typo. There is no .ca.gov because California wouldn't give us .ca.gov. But we're going to see if there's a way to. We, change that so it looked like we're actually part of California instead of sort of part of California. So what's the benefit of having the change the dot gov? There was again? there was some I guess some shenanigans going on with people saying go vote here instead of go vote there. And so people were registering names that sounded like governmental agencies. Okay. So the federal government decided, you know what, let's snip this in the bud, make all counties and cities, anybody that would ever have an election, have a dot gov. They do control the .gov domain name very tightly. In fact, when I first started here seven years ago, I tried to get us to get to a .gov, but they were holding it so tightly they wouldn't let anybody else get it. So because of this uh, stuff that was going on with the election, uh, last big election, they decided to open it up and make everybody switch over. Um, and they put a long extension on there, but then they came back and said, well, if you want any grant money, you better have this address. So they. You know, by hook or by hook, by hook or by crook, they're going to make you switch. So it kind of reduces the spam and the fraud. Mostly the fraud, yeah. Okay. So, and then um, hopefully, find some wood to knock on. Some wood in there. Um, that the government is going to start looking at some of the spam email that coming in and trim it before it ever hits us. That's just a hope. They're talking about it, but once everybody's transitioned, then they'll be able to start doing that. But you know, there's going to be some laggers, so that might not happen until 2029. Thank you. Lupe, you want to say yeah. something? 
just want to add, uh, I want to say thanks to John and admin for, for taking the lead on this. It's, it's, it's imperative that we adopt the ca.gov uh, URL because back in 2020, there was a broad information was sent, being sent out to not just voters in Kings County, but throughout the state and the federal government. So it was acknowledged that it was a big, big issue that misinformation was being shared. Uh, we were victims of such uh, locally, and it was it was it's a problem that was coming forward. So coming to a 2024 presidential election is imperative that we take action and that we assure our voters and our constituents and our public that the information they're getting is coming from a secure source. That is the sole purpose of this switch, and that is the sole purpose why this both bills, not on federal level, but a state level, was adopted and moved forward. So my counterparts and I support this. Our association supports the, the switch just to ensure that our public is getting secured and truthful information that is coming from the source and not misinformation like we experienced back in the 2020 general election. So thank you, thanks again to John. Uh, for admin for your guys support i hope you guys adopt this and that we can move forward with this before the uh 2024 general election so it's huge it's, it's thank you year. very much thanks for that explanation supervisor valley uh, yeah thank you mr chairman uh mr chairman i think i think it uh it's worth hitting the pause button here we have till 2029 uh to the to do this for two reasons one there's got to be costs associated with this just from stationary business cards uh county forms advertising the new videos we just put out um and and so uh as you and i talked before the meeting where i asked you if this new um domain was a uh, typo because there's no rhythm to it it doesn't look good there's no uniformity it should be kings.ca.gov other counties as as you know um they've been allowed the .ca.gov um and and so if we're going to be one of the counties without that it's, it's it's just no uniformity to it so john uh said there's an opportunity to reach out again well only his it office has reached out to the state i think it's worth the letter um, signed by the chairman uh to whatever department in the state of california asking that we get that dot ca dot gov and then only change one time if we have till 2029 but to uh, change it, undergo the expenses, the time, the trouble, the effort, and then a year from now or two years from now, find out, hey, look, you can have .ca.gov and then change it again. I'm not trying to make any trouble. I'm just saying, to me, it's it, it just looks off. On the report over the weekend, I was, uh, it, it just doesn't look right. Kingca.gov, there's no, there's no flow to it. It's not get it's not easy on the eyes it's i don't like it i don't like it um that's a maybe that's all i can say to that um as far as the expense other than that the departments don't have to change all their letterhead overnight you can use what you've got because the old email addresses will still work the old website will still work um, it just redirects the only noticeable change is any outgoing email after today should say county of kings ca.gov so that would be the only change is that now our outgoing email address will change. And we can, if by some chance they give us kings.ca.gov, we can activate that and we can keep this address still working just like our old addresses. Because we don't want somebody that's had our old address in their Rolodex or on their phone trying to send email and not being able to send. And all we have to do is just pay, it's negligible, $150 a year. Actually, the .gov ones are free, but the, the old, dot com and the old uh, ca dot us uh, those were about 150 dollars a year so it's very negligible for the cost to keep your old email address rather than the expense of if somebody was trying to get a hold of us and not be able to or even worse if somebody took our old web address and turned it into some you know weird website uh, you wouldn't want to do that so we keep those old addresses just for that purpose again i'm only one uh... I would think that it'd be worth the time to send a letter and ask and go through our two um, representatives in the legislature to for them to put in the ask as well to get the .ca.gov. Other counties have it. I think I think unless I'm wrong, I think people are more used to a .ca.gov versus King CA. That's not the name of our county. We're not King CA. We're Kings, right? Um, I don't know. 
Okay. Thank you. Any more comments, questions? Uh, Mr. Chair, the only thing I would is just tie up all of the names that we can because people think different. And so when they are searching for um, that, using that search engine to find the site. So I think really we should tie it up. And in fact, I would even add the 1893 uh, um, date uh, of formation to again, tie that up to add it a little bit more security by adding numbers to the, to the, to the uh, address. Um, and again, even if we don't use them, we tie them up so we have control of them. Because again, just by the domain, huh? Do you mean just like by the domain fee? Right. Pay that every year. Correct. Is that like fifty bucks or something a year? One hundred and fifty, I think. But yeah, because that way we tie it up and we do don't allow those domain names to be used outside the digital world, and we have control of. Them. And again, I think at some point in the future, we're probably going to be looking at adding numbers. And I just think 1893 was a formation of the county. It kind of makes sense and ties it together. Any more questions? Do you want to you want to make a motion to bring it back or you want to bring it back? Oh, I, well, I just assume move forward uh, with this one, but just explore uh, more domain names that we can tie up and have control of. We, we can accommodate that. Okay. You so, know, because that we still need to be able to apply for grants. We still need to meet the um, grants st um, standards. And this is going to get us to there. Um, and it still gives us time to be able to add um, additional domain names that will that you can think of. Um, you know, in the future, because again, I think it's, I think it makes a lot of sense to tie them up now so that nobody else. You know, has that domain name. Okay, do I have a motion? So move. Move by Supervisor Nevs. Second. Second by Supervisor Robinson. Uh, I guess I'm going to say this is going to be a motion approved as outlined with direction. Correct. And so we have a motion and a second. You okay with that? Are you fine with uh, the letter, uh, letter being sent to request? Yeah, you guys are yet? way over what I think my responsibility is. It's just a, it's what outgoing is. I'm going to have to take. John Devlin's advice on this, what what works. We can change it at a time. In 1993, we were even talking about a W the World yeah. Wide Web. We didn't have it here. W it's going to change w again in 10 years, 20 years. So I think maybe we also can leverage our uh, lobbyists and ask them, you know, who who really controls that at the state level and then petition them. It yeah, will be up there next week with uh, our staff. So okay. Okay. Madam Clerk, we call the roll. Joe Neves. Yes. Richard Raleigh. All right. Doug Burboon. Yes. Rusty Robinson. Yes. Richard Fagundes. Yes. Five in favor. Thank you. I think 1893. 1883 is the one at uh, yeah. Paramount, right? And just to let you know, the that $150 a year, that's like the high water mark. Some of them, if you could do like a 10 year, it, it drops it much lower. Um, and but, since we're talking about ourselves, oxygen. we won't be using this. That's for our staff to send letters out from the election department to know that it is valid. Coming from County of Kings, correct? Actually, all of everybody from now on, it'll it'll have that County of Kings CA.gov email address. If we send, send it from our work email. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but I mean at minimum, there's there's gonna be costs. Well, I know I'm gonna want a new business cards. I'm, I want them today. No, I'm fine. But, but your your old address will still work. So yeah, if you yeah. hand out a business card with the old address, they'll, that'll still work. The other thing too, a lot of people won't know about this for a while. We are putting out social media splash, et cetera. Um, and, but some people won't know it, or they maybe they don't know how to change it in their phone once they've got your email address in there. Maybe you sent them something, they add you to their contacts, and they don't change it for years. We keep it just in case they have something important and they send you an email, it'll still work. Okay, five in favor, right? We already call roll? Yes, we did. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, Next item will be board member and announcement. Supervisor Robinson. Uh, this week just filled the questions about uh, water and, and homeless issues. Uh, one constituent I talked to was grateful that it got cleaned up between 12th and 13th in Hume. So thank you to all those, particularly Sheriff's Department, for helped in that effort. Well, wait, what was that? 12th and 13th? Oh, yeah, I think it's between 12th and 13th in Hume. Is that is that correct? And on Houston, okay. As yeah. opposed to the exercise yard, is that what you're talking about? No, no. So uh, it was it was in a, a farmer's bill. It was a few weeks ago. We received a notice uh, that they were given a notice to vacate. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah, oh, maybe right. maybe a hundred or or so homeless that were there. And uh, anyway, it was quite an effort in that uh, 
in that movement. So thanks for all your help. Supervisor Valley. Oh yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just real quick, uh, one um, uh, Jose Ramirez sent, uh, sent one thousand uh, free tickets for his upcoming fight on Saturday, April twenty seventh. Yeah, Save Mart Center. The uh, ticket vouchers are going to be in uh, with Scott Howell. So priority is uh, veterans and all public safety. Everyone under the public safety umbrella. Uh, but if you want some tickets uh, at the end of the day, see Scott. Scott's going to work with his uh, counterparts in Fresno County, Tulare County, and get those tickets out uh, to go see Jose Ramirez there on that night. And then, um, well, uh, that's it. Thank you. Hey, Supervisor Fagundes. I'm good. Supervisor Nams. Hey, Mr. Chair. Uh, the board met as the Housing Authority of Kings County on March 27th, uh, reviewed the policies regarding travel expenses, uh, alcohol and drug policies, um, and reviewed uh, the audit statements, and they were all uh, approved and, and uh, moved forward. Uh, the LAFCO meeting was also held on the 27th. Uh, the um, Attendance to the Cal LAFCO conference uh, was discussed and also approved uh, as part of the LAFCO annual budget. Uh, the new 2024-25 uh, uh, annual budget was also presented with a public hearing set for April 17th. And then the uh, appointment of Martin Devine to, uh, was approved as the public member taking the place of Danny Chin. The uh, Kings County uh, Area Public Transit Agency also met, uh, held their second uh, unmet transit needs hearing, um, and that hearing was closed and will uh, allow staff to go ahead and bring back the recommendations based on the testimony received, both written and uh, verbal. Uh, we also reviewed the and approved the grants and project lists for uh, future improvements for operations. A uh, change order was also discussed and approved as presented for the new transit center. And then closed session was held uh, to discuss uh, labor negotiations with staff. And then at the uh, Kings County Association of Governments, also on the 27th, informational items regarding the uh, Transportation Public Development Act um, and the state transportation improvement programs uh, were talked. And then we wrapped up the Valley Voice trip uh, that was held uh, that went to Sacramento. On uh, Thursday, the uh, 28th, the cook crew got together at the uh, to support the Easter Bunny at the Santa Rosa Rancheria. Special thanks to Supervisor Fagundes, Greg Martella, retired Fire Chief uh, Bill Lynch, and current Fire Chief Salvador Flores, and uh, Matt Sanfilippi. And preparing pancakes, scrambled eggs, and bacon. A little rain uh, occurred, but didn't dampen the enthusiasm of this dedicated crew to eat and cook. They did a great job. And then on uh, Saturday, March uh, 30th, Kathy and I prepared 300 hot dogs for the Stratford uh, Easter egg hunt. Um, again, it was a little wet, uh, but it was uh, really a, a, a beautiful morning, um, even though it was a little chilly and a little uh, damp. Also, uh, you were passed out a letter that the uh, clerk, uh, Catherine Venturella, has uh, put together. Uh, the Riverdale Portuguese Celebration will be celebrating their 100th uh, um, milestone this June. And the letter in front of you kind of outlines uh, some of the um, history as well as the current operation and future um, and um, is acknowledged by the County of Kings, even though Riverdale is kind of in Fresno County. A lot of their um, history is commingled uh, with Kings and certainly appreciate your uh, support and your letters on the bottom. This letter will then be forwarded back to uh, the Riverdale and they'll be producing a book that uh, will outline their 100 year history and milestones. So I just certainly appreciate your signature and your support and any um, additions or uh, uh, editorial comments that you wanna make on that letter. Um, Catherine wrote it, so I'm good. <coughs> With that, thank you, Mr. Chair. So nothing else happened that week, last week? None. Nothing. I think we had something on uh, March 29th was a celebration of the uh, Supervisor Neves' birthday. Right. It's a leap year. <laughs> Don't count. Uh, happy birthday, sir. Yeah, happy birthday, Joey. Yeah, happy thanks. Birthday. Okay, we'll move on now. Uh, I have nothing more to add uh, at this time, so right. we'll go ahead and we'll go to closed session. Oh, I'm sorry. Here he is. It makes more noise over there. Um, <laughs>
Board correspondence. Board correspondence and further future agenda items. So your board received a correspondence from Consolidated Mosquito Abatement District dated March 18th. It's a notice of, a, of intent to apply for public health pesticides. You also received a letter from San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District dated March 26, 2024 on the annual air toxic report for 2023. And lastly, you received a letter from Kinder Morgan dated March 3rd on an activity notifications to protect natural, natural gas pipelines. For upcoming upcoming events, Kings County Behavioral Health has a member family member support group dated uh, to, on April 2nd today from 530 to 730. This is weekly, so it's held here on campus. Additionally, they also host a veteran support group and that will take place April 9th from 530 to 730 at the Veterans Memorial Hall in Hanford. Kings County Library will have a poetry open mic to celebrate National Poetry Month, April 13th from 11 to 1 p.m. at the Hanford Branch Library. And lastly, the Kings County District Attorney's Office Victim Witness Assistance Program will do their annual quilt unveiling in support of National Crimes Victims Right Week on April 23rd at the Veterans Memorial Hall in Hanford. For our upcoming agenda items, we do have a large agenda on April 9th. Administration has five items, some claims for damages, an appointment of the library director, some issuance of bonds for an aircraft storage hangar project, chemical waste quarterly update, and approval of the social media policy. Behavioral Health has one item, a study session on the passage of Behavioral Health Service Program and bond measure that just recently passed. Fire has an item on some transfer of funds. Health has two items on the purchase of some refrigerator and freezer. Human Resources has three items, some job specification, and some spec updates for the Finance Department and Probation Department. Human Services Agency has a Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month. IT has a renewal of the maintenance agreement for the Office 365. And Public Works has four items on the notice of completion for the Board of Supervisors Boardroom Improvement Projects and an update on the county roads. Um, this will be from last week's study session. And also um, on the Government Center Facility Infrastructure Project and Solar Project that's coming to the county. So that will all be taking place next week. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we're going to hit, go to a closed session as outlined, and we'll adjourn until April 9th. I mean, thank you.